going to be. And now more than 30 years later, she's returned to the places and scenes that shaped the swinging 60s. Those really were all our yesterdays. Time. Those were the days, my friend. I suppose in some ways this was the inspiration for me to record Those Were The Days. We'd spent ten years of a very intense life together and I still wanted to achieve something for myself. Looking back on it all now, we had no idea that we were living history. But John was a one-off, absolutely unique. Maybe he's looking down on me now and saying, good on you, Sin. Terrific stuff. <laughs> Cynthia, lovely Brings to see you. Tear to the eyes. Does it does it does it? Yeah, yes. looking at all the girls in that particular clip there, you're the only one who, who hasn't changed. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Your hair is as modern now as it was then, because they all had the, the bouffant, but you always had the, the, the long blonde hair. I think what you do is you stick to what you feel comfortable with. And, yeah. you know, I always thought, like the Beatles thought in the early days, we would never be on stage when we're 30. Mm. I always thought that I'd never have long hair when I was 50, <laughs> but right. I still have. So. And now our first record. Yes. Is Why wait till you're just over 30 to have a first record? <laughs> oh, over there. Oh, right, right. Um, it was pure chance, pure chance. Uh, like meeting John was pure chance in many mm. ways. It was fateful. And I think that, um, in fact, it happened very strangely. It's a long story, but I'll cut it short. But, but have you been a, sort of a frustrated singer all this time? You thought, well, he's doing so well, I can't sort of climb up on the on the platform with them I better just no, wait, I, did, no I, I had no true ambition to I mean I was in a um, Hoylake Parish Girls Choir when I was between the ages of 10 and 13 mm. and I used to go to pri choir practice twice a week and I eventually got a solo uh, part which was singing who is Sylvia what is she yeah and that was the pinnacle of my sort of um, stardom Singing career, <laughs> yes. yes and then of course I uh, I being an artist, I wanted to go to art college, which I did, and then I met John, and everything changed for me, obviously. And uh, probably the best thing that happened then was meeting John and having Julian. That's, yeah. you, know, you knew him a while, though, didn't you, before you actually became an item as such? You were friends. Yes. Oh, very good friends, yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> very close friends. Yes, we were, um, in fact, we were together for ten years, mm -hmm. all together. But we were going out together for four years before the Beatles actually became famous. But you were kind of opposites as well, weren't you? Because you were the quiet one, and John, as we all know, was far from quiet. Yes, well, they do say sometimes that opposites uh, attract. That's right. right. must have been the case. But really, deep down, we weren't opposites in many ways, because we bo both came from similar backgrounds in, ma in many ways. John appeared to be a rough teddy boy, yeah. but he, ca he was living with Auntie Mimi in a very respectable semi-detached house in Liverpool, and I was living in a very respectable semi-detached house in Hoylake. Mm. And yeah. we both had the love of art and music. And we also had the, the tragedy of losing a parent, you know, at the same age. So underneath all that... Um, mm. Because this is the thing about John, underneath it, he was a very, very complex sort of person. Yes, he was. He had a lot of uh, And you complexes. didn't know the half of it at that stage, did you? <laughs> Mind you, no, nobody knew the half of it. No, thank God. But, mm. um, you know, it's, it's artistic people, especially special artistic people, unique mm. people, you know, need nurturing and, and loving and caring for. And... Um, it's something, it's a challenge that, that I couldn't turn aside at the time, you know, because apart from the, the physical attraction, the mental attraction was, was tremendous. Mm. Now, when you were with John and you found that you were expecting Julian, that's when you, you got married. Do you think you would have married him had you not have been pregnant? Uh, probably not, you know. I have to be totally honest about this because I would have gone... Um, I would hopefully have become an art teacher, which is what I was um, training for. And, mm -hmm. And he, I don't know what, what on earth would have happened to John. I mean, it's, you know, life is full of fateful happenings. Meeting Brian, who actually, without Brian, they would not have this made Brian it. Mm. The manager yes, at the time, of course. Who, who led them to all that. But fame. without, without actually bumping into Brian or Brian bumping into them, and that wouldn't have happened. How did you feel about Brian? Because Brian was very mindful of the boys, mop top image, and all the rest right. of it. And mm. having one of them married was not part of his Doesn't picture. Quite fit, so you had really? to kind of. Yes, but in, the, background. but in those days that was the case anyway, yeah. because I think with most managers, I mean, you didn't read like you do today in, in the press about families and children mm. and, and background. In fact, it was derogatory to their image in those days. So, of course, I mean, if you're brought up with that and if you're also brought up with a northern male chauvinist attitude, 
you know, it's nothing's new. I mean, yeah. It's only as you grow up and as, of course, the 60s came about, you know, the liberation happened. Mm. Yes, and then that it's you, learning how to cope with the liberation, yes. of course, as but well. But during the, that time, you, you know, you mm. accepted it. But having children anyways can be pretty hard work. So to have a baby, and that's when everything took off for the Beatles, right. how easy was it, your relationship, yours with John? It was, it was difficult, mainly because um, in the film clip before, you know, Love Me Do came, was a hit just as I was pregnant with Julian. Mm. From that moment, from the day, in fact, John wasn't there at Julian's birth. He was on tour. Yeah, it you totally know, it exploded, was all, didn't it? It totally analogy. exploded, and, and no two people, I think, could survive that. Mm. Mm. Very few do anyway. You did survive it for a while, but then along came the drug scene. We were talking about the liberation. Yes. That was all part of it. Right. John got involved in that, and also the Maharishi and all the rest of it. Um, and that's really when, that was sort of the beginning of the end for you two, wasn't it? Yes, I, it was... It was fated. Yeah. I hate using this word all the time, but it was fated. Um, I was the first to go in, in this whole group. I mean, we had, we had a, the most wonderful time together, all of us, Patty and, and Maureen. And we were a very, very sort of special group at that time. But it had, the bubble had to, to burst. It really did. And it, it came about by pressures from outside, taking away from what we had as a nucleus. Mm. And eventually they all had to grow up including myself you know you can't live that sort of fairy tale life forever and of course what happened afterwards was very public the fact that you were divorced and that he married yeah. yoko ono um his death how did that i mean how did you hear about it first of all i guess like <coughs> most of us through uh... well i was staying with maureen starkey who was then at that time divorced from, from ringo and she lived in london and i was visiting and it was during the night i stayed the night and i was living in north wales at the time and Ringo phoned from New York because he heard the news first. He phoned Maureen, mm -hmm. and Maureen came up to my room to tell me in the middle of the night. And then it was, you know, all hell let loose mm -hmm. after that. It was horrendous. I mean, to lose him in the first place to somebody else, that's something a lot of women, when that happens, they find yeah. it very difficult. But to lose him forever... I think, also I when think, Julian, your son, yes. was developing that relationship with him at that time. It was, it was harder for Julian uh, mm. because he was just coming up to teenage years, you know, mm. 17. Mm. I'm thinking about it, I lost, lost my father when I was 17, John lost his mother when he was 17, mm. and now Julian loses his father for a second time. Do you ever feel with Julian, I look at him sometimes and he looks so like his he dad. He sounds like him He him sounds well. like his dad. Do you ever get that reincarnation yes, he's, feeling? He's got a lot of his mum in him. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> no, I'm not denying it. Yes, yeah, I know. But... Yes, well, obviously, you know, um, yeah. the genes were right mm. for Julian. <laughs> Do you still love the memory of your life with, with John? The memory of my life, you know, to survive in life, um, there are so many different areas. There's the tragic side and there's the, the positive side. And I always hopefully look on, on the positive side of it. And mm. I, I enjoy and... And probably I've had one of the most fantastic lives that you could possibly choose, or fate chooses well, you're for you. Well, starting again now yes. on this, oh, on this I know. singing career. <laughs> Couldn't it? Yeah, I'm glad I know. It. I mean, you could explode onto the scene tomorrow, so I'm glad we caught you just before then. It has been an, a tremendous honour, because I have Lovely been a Beatles you. fan all my born days. Me Great too, to meet you. Thank you for talking to me. Nice to meet you, Cynthia. Lovely to meet you. Thank, Thank you. you, too. Cynthia Lennon. Now, we're taking a break. Join us in a couple of minutes for today's phone-in on Pets with Vet, Michael Payne. See you then.